Hey guys, here we are for a short track guide in the Mercedes W12S Spa. For this track guide, I'm going to show you the lap in full speed first, and then I'm going to show the lap in slow motion and break down my approach to each corner. Now before I get to the lap, there's a few things I want to mention. For this lap, we're using the baseline spa qualifying setup, and we're also using uh, track settings of uh, 66 degree air temperature and 71 degree track temperature, 70% humidity, and a track usage of moderately low, which is around 20 to 40%. Now let's get on to the lap. So now let's go to the slow motion track guide. So as we come out of the final corner, you can see that we took a very wide approach out of the final corner to get a good run uh, onto the start finish line and being s slow on the accelerator before I get to the DRS zone because once we get to the DRS zone, we're gonna get extra wheel spin from all the extra uh, speed that we're gonna get from the reduced drag. And as we approach the first corner, we're gonna be looking over to the left-hand side, but uh, we're not really going to be aiming for a particular brake marker. If we're aiming for anything in particular, it's the 100, but we really shouldn't be looking that far over, especially having to time the 100 so perfectly. So what I'm really looking at is just like this uh, or uh, brown dirt marks like in the grass and basically aiming for the middle of that. You kind of would just have your peripherals on that dirt and looking more towards the apex. And like basically once your peripherals see the dirt and then kind of right around now, so kind of looking to the right hand side, but keeping your peripherals on that dirt is a useful way to judge when to start braking. So around 60% brake pressure down to second gear. And the goal is really just to trail off by the time we get to the apex and see a small uh, lock up on the right front tire and slow acceleration really waiting to uh, strain out the wheel before, before we start getting back to the gas. It's honestly one of the most challenging corners because you can get so much wheel spin um, out of the corner or just uh, spin out by putting too much throttle. So coming down the hill here approaching Eau Rouge, um, just shifting up to seventh gear, just holding the right hand side of the track, um, shifting up and getting up to eighth gear right before uh, getting to turn left a bit, just kind of following like this uh, this groove, like this darker line, getting to the apex. And as you can see, once you get to the top, it is a blind apex. You can't really see where the curb is. I just kind of try to keep the wheel straight by the time I get to like this curve, smoothing out the wheel. And there's a small jink to the left just to keep ourselves within the track limits. As we get to the DRS zone, opening up the, the rear wing, and then uh, just taking the shortest line, smoothing ourselves out to the the outside, you can see at this point we're kind of still in the middle of the track. We can get further over, but I just want to be safe and not get the 
the tire stuck in the grass if that accidentally does happen. Now for a qualifying lap, again, we're going to be breaking all the way into these curbs. I'd say for a typical race lap, we're going to be breaking basically right at the start of them. But you can see about a car length or two past the start of the curbs, getting on the brakes around 60% again. Downshifting to fifth early for this one. And if you are able to commit enough, you can try to take fifth into here, but I downshift to fourth just to be safe. That way I don't uh, put myself in a bad position for the next corner. Partial throttle just to really put myself in a good position. Getting in throttle too early will put yourself get stuck more in the middle of the track. So really trying to focus on this third corner since it's where you get the, the best exit. So again, getting back to full throttle, I upshift to sixth a bit early there. Probably don't really need to and kind of stay in fifth. Um, I think it's sometimes once you get over that curve, just shifting helps uh, steady, uh, steady the car. Shifting up to seventh gear, approaching a really challenging corner. So again, braking basically right at the start of the curve on the left-hand side and downshifting like slowly down to fifth. And I wait a little bit longer to fourth and then it actually looks like I shift them all pretty close together, but it's just really easy to downshift the, everything way too early. And then by the time you get to third, you're going to be locking up the right front. So being really patient on the amount of brake pressure used, you can see I basically get down to 50%, but once I start turning, I'm down to like 20 or 10% to minimize lockage. So really trying to get all the braking done uh, before you start turning for this corner, just because it's really easy to lock up the fronts. Um, again, partial throttle, making sure not to run wide on exit, and then approaching this corner, which is deceivingly fast. So as we go over to chase view, you can see that we bring the car over onto the curb, and then as we get to the apex, we get back to throttle, and we use up most of the track on exit, and we actually could be using more of this area. We could try to get like the car all the way over on the green, except for the left-hand side tires. And I feel this is a this is a corner where hitting the apex is almost slow. I feel like if you can take it a bit wider, just maintain more momentum, more speed, that'll get you a better run than what I did. So I'd say the thing you just don't want to do, try not to get over this curb and then sell the car. Try to get as close as possible to the curb or even a little bit wide of it, and just maintain that momentum as we uh, approach Puan down here. So again, uh, Heading up to Puan, I'm shifting up to 8th gear through here, and again, this is always a question of can I take this flat or not, and I know it was really close for me. The thing is, while I, while I am in 8th gear, I'm not high in the revs at all, and so I feel like by scrubbing off some speed, it's got to put me in the really low revs, so I let off a little bit just that way I can put myself into 7th gear in the high revs, and just continue pushing the car and like all the... The ERS power and as out of the exit should shift back up to eighth, but I feel that keeping it in the low revs in eighth might be a bit slower, so it's probably pretty close though. Again, for this uh, right hander braking basically right under the sign or actually by the start of the curves or so, uh, around 60%, you can take this a lot deeper than you can expect. Uh, up to fifth gear for this first part and then a small lift and fifth for the second part. This is actually a place that really burns your tires up throughout the race so I'd say you can probably downshift to fourth during the race here just to minimize tire scrubbing but for the hot lap you can keep it in fifth uh, back to full throttle and then for this left hander really trying to take as much of the curb on the left hand side as possible to get a wide approach. Um, you do have to be careful about not getting in the grass here since it can uh, unstabilize the car. So down to fourth gear, getting back to throttle really early. You can see that we're up to like half throttle before you even get to the apex. So you can see braking and then back to half throttle by the time we get to the apex and almost full throttle really early. So you can open up this corner quite fast. Basically using up all the track, you can see that uh, again, we're taking basically this whole curve, but we could probably bring our left-hand sides over on more of this green turf. So we're being a little bit conservative with the track limits, but we can probably find another tenth or half a tenth there by using all that. So now as we exit onto this long straight, we're just taking the line of least resistance as we approach the next corner, approaching the right-hand side, and then turning in, just hugging the curve right here, unwinding the wheel. And as you approach the final chicane on the track, uh, again, really trying to, hard to find a braking zone here. There's so there's not really much to look at. As we're passing this, uh, like, 150 board, um, just that as, like, a reference for kind of timing when to brake. You're not going to brake at the 150, but you can try to judge, like, maybe a second or two right after the 150. But it's basically, I would say, like, two-thirds from the 150 board to the start of the curb. So it's not in the middle between the 150 and the curb, but I would say, like, two-thirds. That's kind of how I try to judge it. And once we get to there, you can see we're getting, I don't know, a little bit before the curb, getting on the brakes. Uh, I'd say around 80% or even 90, so you really want to get all these shifts down, done really early. And the important part is just really getting the car turned in to get onto this curb. The tighter you can get here, the more baking there is to help rotate the car. And so 
even if you're out wide just by like half a car length onto the, this line, the car is going to be way offline for the second part. So getting uh, turned in, even hitting that little sausage curve probably won't hurt you too badly. Uh, so I think for this first part, we're downshifting either the first or second. You're down to first. But as we get to the second part, upshifting the second just to minimize wheel spin. Uh, should say second as we rotate right there. So yeah, upshifting the second. And then partial throttle on exit. You can see the wheel spin having to correct the wheel. And then trying to use up all the track on exit. But yeah, it's all about that approach, being able to get this curbing over here to position your car in the right area. So again, being able to turn in and unwind the wheel. If you're stuck on the left-hand side from overshooting the first part, really going to kill your exit. So this is all about making that apex uh, to be able to place your car in the right spot. So hopefully that uh, track guy was useful. And I'm just going to play the lap one more time in chase view so you can see the lines that I'm taking throughout the lap. So that was a 141.247. Hopefully this track guy was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.